Hello and welcome to episode one of Bridging the Gap, a Let Them Live podcast. Um, I'm so excited to introduce this podcast. This is my first time ever recording a podcast, so I'm excited to see where this goes. I'm excited to talk to so many people about abortion and helping women and how we can bridge the gap between the pro-life and pro-choice communities and come together to help women that are in crisis that need our support. Um, make sure you guys like, share, and follow uh, Let Them Live on social media and share this podcast if you like it. I'm really excited to um, continue to invite uh, just a wide variety of guests on here and and excited to share that with you all. So as you uh, may or may not know, 73% of women have abortions because of financial burden. And Let Them Live's mission is to help these women um, cancel their abortions and choose life with financial support. Um, and our guest today is Josie Leinert. And Josie is a mother of three boys. Um, she has a bonus teenage stepson and two little ones of her own. Uh, she lives in California with her husband and a pack of boys. Uh, Josie is an attorney practicing corporate and sports law. Prior to her legal career, Josie was an actress on more than 23 professional television and film projects for various studios and, studios and networks, including Paramount, Warner Brothers, ABC, NBC, and Disney. She is best known for her role as Kaylee Cruz in the Freeform series Make It or Break It, and as FBI agent Michelle Vega in the CBS series The Mentalist. Josie is a proud first-generation immigrant whose parents escaped Cuba for a free world. She is committed to fighting not only for her children, but for all children in the way her parents and grandparents fought for her. Okay. Um, so, Josie, can you tell me a little bit about, like, your story? Mm -hmm. Like, what is your pro-life story? Like, why are you pro-life? Like, how did, like, who are you and how did you get to this, you know, belief? Who are you? <laughs> I love that question. I'm like, I don't know. Um, so I am, um, I'm a mom of three boys. Uh, one of them being um, my bonus baby stepson, um, who's 15. And then my husband and I have, um, have two. My, our oldest is two. And then the baby's 10 months. So they're 16 months apart, um, which is made for a very, interesting last two years. <laughs> Very fun, um, but interesting to say the least. Um, you know, I think, well, to begin with, you know, I grew up in a household that instilled those beliefs um, mm -hmm. and values, but I think mm -hmm. it's really important to come into your own beliefs and your own value system. Um, and I moved to California when I was 18 to go to UCLA and start auditioning for, um, for work out here, uh, for acting and whatnot. And, um, you know, life took me on a really interesting journey. Uh, and I feel like now at 35, what, um, 17 years later, I think, um, I can really own these beliefs and say, these aren't because of the family that I grew up in, mm -hmm. or because my religion tells me X, Y, and Z, they're mm -hmm. mine. Um, mm -hmm. I own them. And mm -hmm. that's because of my life experience and where my life has led me to this point. And one of the biggest reasons I'm pro-life is because I was blessed with the experience of motherhood. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's a huge huge blessing that I don't take for granted and I didn't take for granted um, while I was pregnant. That's not to say that there wasn't times that I was pregnant that I was just like, oh my gosh, I am so over this. Yeah. Um, that acts, 
100% happen. Yeah. Um, but I was so aware of how lucky I was right. to be able to carry my children. Mm -hmm. um, not to say that um, you can't have children and you can't experience motherhood in another way, because I think there's other really beautiful ways that women come into motherhood. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact that I was able to hold my kids uh, mm -hmm. is so special to me. And during that, mm -hmm. I was able to see just how alive they are when they are inside of you from mm -hmm. the beginning to the end. I mean, mm -hmm. even at our, our 18 weeks, 12 weeks, like they're moving. I, I remember when we went yep. to yeah when we went to the neonatal specialist. I think we I think, yeah. I think we went at twenty weeks. I know we went a little earlier because I I actually had a miscarriage first. I had a miscarriage mm -hmm. at like six weeks, I believe, mm -hmm. um, the first time. So uh, the doctor sent me to. Do you hear my son in the background? Sorry. <laughs> no, it's so okay, it's awesome. I, That's I, the, I, the sign uh, of life is. <laughs> yeah. No. It's I love it. Life happening it's early here i'm on the west coast so it's yes. whatever time is it it's not even eight so he'll be yes. headed to school in um in a couple of minutes but um so i remember going to the new natologist and he was like gosh this is one active baby in here he does not like hold still for me to take these measurements so even at like 20 weeks just so unbelievably alive and then and then forget about it like from then on especially, you know, entering your third trimester, it is like kicking and, and elbowing. Right. You're like, getting like punched in the stomach. <laughs> oh my gosh. It is violent. I'm like, you guys got to relax in there. So, you know, I was able to experience firsthand for myself just how alive um, these babies are in the womb and then everything thereafter, you know, once they're born and the joy um, that babies can bring you. I, I mean, I really, even in the hardest days of motherhood, because there's some days where it's, I mean, it's, it's tough. It's, it's challenging. Absolutely. This isn't a motherhood, um, podcast. That's, that's another, that's another <laughs> rabbit hole. <clears throat> but even in those really difficult days, yeah, I'm just like in awe of my kids. They're just blessings. I mean, yeah. That's they amazing. really are. They're, they're gifts from above. Um, and they've changed my life. They've changed my marriage. They've changed mm -hmm. my home. Um, all for the better. I mean, yeah. my home is a bit. That's a so bit beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And, and you know, you, you had mentioned too that, that you had miscarried. And, yeah. and I can only imagine like that there is pain and sadness and grief with that. And the fact that there's like emotions like that, that come from miscarrying it, it symbolizes a loss. And that also yeah. like lends to the value of, of that life and what, yeah. what maybe could have been, you know, and that does show like the humanity of, of, you know, your baby, because when you miscarry, you're not just miscarrying like something random, right? That's, that's your right. child. Um, and it does lend to that, like that valuable dignity of, of that human being as well. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I, I miscarried, I miscarried quite, or I remember, I'll never forget. I, I found out I was pregnant on a Thursday um, and I miscarried on Tuesday. Um, mm -hmm. So I, it wasn't even a week and I was mm -hmm. shocked at how devastated I was. I was just yeah. devastated. I was so mm -hmm. emotional about it. Um, yeah, it was yeah. tough. It was, yeah, I can and it was, and, and it, and it took me by surprise. Cause I was like, mm -hmm. I, I didn't, it hasn't even been a week, you know, I'm six right. weeks pregnant, six weeks pregnant. Uh, but still it was, um, it was hard. It was, it yeah. was hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then the other reason, the, the other life circumstances that have brought me to where I am today is everything that I've experienced, um, with my brother and my sister-in-law, um, and their experiences with pregnancy, um, and parenthood. Um, you know, currently my nephew is 10 months. So he was born, he, he was, he turned 10 months yesterday. Oh, he was, so yeah. He I was, got the chance um, to meet him over zoom when I talked to your oh, sister-in-law and I want to have her on too. To just, oh, she's the best. 
it, she's amazing and he's so sweet and she's oh. the best. My brother is the best. Um, all my siblings are mm -hmm. pretty special. Um, but, uh, you know, he was diagnosed with a very, very rare genetic disorder in the womb. It honestly doesn't even have, I remember like there's not even really a name. It's, it's like a string of like numbers and letters cause it's so rare. Um, and so many of these abortion laws that are out there, it's, well, you can't do this unless there is, you know, serious, uh, serious injury to the mother or a severe abnormality or, you know, something within the child that, uh, basically incompatible to life. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, for all intents and purposes, my nephew could very well not be here today mm -hmm. had they decided, you know, to get an abortion, um, because technically it would have been legal, you know, for them to mm -hmm. do so because of his mm -hmm. condition. Um, but they didn't and, yeah. and they didn't because his life matters, you know, yes. Yes. And, and who's to say that, oh, well, your life is compatible uh, with, with like living, but oh, your life, you know, you're, you're incompatible with life. And who, who's the one, like, that's the crazy right. thing about all this is like, who is the one that decided that certain people right. should like be allowed to live and certain people shouldn't like, that's, that's just crazy to me. Yeah. And, you know, I started this off by talking about my, my journey of motherhood and how my children are such blessings, but my children aren't just blessings because they're healthy. Um, mm -hmm. All children are blessings. All of them. They, their lives are all worthy. They all matter. Um, and not that my nephew has not had his challenges and he has, you know, they battle with medical issues every day, but he laughs and he mm -hmm. smiles and he <laughs> is got so much love Mm -hmm. surrounding him all mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. And that's what I pray. When I pray mm -hmm. for him, I pray that he is able to really feel all of the love and the joy that's surrounding mm -hmm. him all the time. Um, mm -hmm. And now that, now that he's like smiling and, and laughing, like, <laughs> we can actually see yeah. that. Yeah. He does feel that he knows yes. that. And what, mm -hmm. and whether my nephew lives a year, another mm -hmm. year, or another five, or another 10. Mm -hmm. um, taking that life was not, not our choice, right. was not our decision to make. Right. Um, and God works in really mysterious ways, you know, like we never know what he has up his sleeve. I actually was saying before coming on here, <laughs> Oh, I've always wanted to do a podcast. Oh, um, cool. Because they Me look too. Like so fun. Um, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I never thought that it would be for this. <laughs> this was definitely a curveball. Um, and it took me a lot to be here today. Um, but but God works in really mysterious ways. He's got uh he's got a sense of humor on him for sure. Oh and yeah. I was like randomly know. like reach yeah. out to Josie, do this podcast. I'm like, okay, you know? Yeah. So here we and are. You, and you never, you never know what he's doing and how he's working and whether your baby that was supposed to have this horrific abnormality or incompatible with life, like what was he brought into this world to teach you? Um, cause I know my kids have taught me so much and things that like, you know, I just wouldn't be who I am today without them. Yeah. And that's true for every child, every child, whether they're sick, whether they're perfectly healthy, whether they're compatible with life or not. It's yeah. every child. Yeah. And the reality is gift. we all like have struggles. Right. And for some right. reason, like, I don't know why, but the culture nowadays is like, uh, oh, we don't want anybody to ever struggle ever. Right. Yeah. But it's like, that's what life is. Like we all yeah. have struggles. You can't eradicate struggling or, you know, grief or pain or physical problem. Like you can't, you just can't. And, and I think yeah. people have this idea of this like perfect world where everybody's perfect yeah. and nobody has anything wrong and life is good all the time, but that's not life. 
you know, right. and, and, and bringing that to the forefront and, and w- what you said um, about, about your nephew, about how he, he came into this world and not only is he experiencing love, so much love surrounding him, but what he is teaching and what your mm-hmm. kids are teaching and what they're teaching us, you know, I, I, um, when I was in high school and in college, like the way I, I made money was I taught swimming lessons and I was like a lifeguard. And one thing I loved to do on the side was, uh, there was like an adult group, uh, like special needs group that came in and, um, the cutest, the cutest guy who had down syndrome and he was just like, follow me around and he loves swimming and like playing. And I like have never smiled so much in my entire life and the pure joy, they don't have like the same worries that we do and they just bring so much happiness, you know, and it's like that where, where people that are different than us can do so much and teach us how to better life, be happier and love, love deeper. And that's what our world really needs. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Yeah. I think that's just so beautiful. Your, your testimony and your, your story. And I'm so glad that you're on here, Um, you know, like talking about this and, you know, when I, I relate, you know, when I was in college, that's when I really started like finding my own voice. I grew up, you know, knowing we're pro-life, but like what else beyond that, yeah. you know, like, what does it mean for you? Like, what does it actually sure. mean to be pro-life and to call yourself that? So I started researching and I was like, okay, what does it mean for me? And came to the same conclusion um, as you, you know, life is valuable and, yeah. and, and that's why it's so important. And you know, I can tell that this issue is important to you for sure. And, you know, just to kind of touch on and like we had talked about tying this into what's currently happening in in the news and what's currently happening right now with like the justice for the five, like, you were so passionate about about that. And, And obviously, this issue is like so important to you. So, you know, just just to describe what's happening, you know, there's a, um, an abortion clinic in Washington, DC. And and we had just talked about how abortions are legal up to birth, like any stage. Um, And it seems like I don't, I mean, legal, I mean, they're probably doing partial birth abortions as well, but abortion just rampant in Washington, DC. Um, And a couple of activists, you know, had caught one of the, um, one of the guys bringing medical waste out to his truck who worked for a company and they had asked like, Hey, like, can we have that box? Um, They discovered that there were 115 aborted babies in that box. Five of them were late term um, abortions that happened. Mm -hmm. And these images are all over um, the internet worldwide. It's, it's become such a big news piece. Um, and I just kind of wanted to hear your thoughts on, on all of this, just like your reaction, like everything that's on your mind with, with what's happening here, you know, with, with DC. Yeah. Um, it's hard to talk about. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know how, I mean, the way that we get our news now, it's just like kind of constant, whether it's like on social media or coming in on your inbox. In your face. Yeah. So how I heard about the story, um, Mm -hmm. I don't exactly remember, but uh, I heard it. Like, I think this, I think the discovery was on a Thursday, if I'm correct. And Mm -hmm. it was, I heard that day or the, no, I did. I did hear that day. Um, Mm -hmm. Cause I remember I saw it on Instagram mm-hmm. um, and I've been following ever since. Um, it's, it's just gut wrenching, you know, mm-hmm. it's, um, it's just, sometimes I, I'm just at a lack of words. Like how is this happening? Um, mm-hmm. And so two big things is, well, there's so many big things, but <clears throat> one of them being how is it that at this point, you know, they have not performed autopsies on these children to see really their cause of death. Um, and if there were partial birth, abor- partial birth abortions, which it really looks like um, from the state of these children, um, 
that could have been the case in, in some of these five. Uh, that's a federal crime. That's a federal crime. How that's not being investigated, it's just, it's just beyond me. In any other circumstance, mm -hmm. it would be investigated. Oh, yeah. Any other circumstance. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it was a, a, a pre-born child, it's not. Now we're in this land of politics and... Great area. You know, <laughs> it, there is no gray. I mean, there shouldn't be any gray area. Right, right? exactly. But, um, I mean, I don't know. I'm an attorney. I think we look at facts and yeah. the facts of that is that just from the way these bodies presented themselves, mm -hmm. there are so many indications that this was a crime. Yeah. Um, the way that these children died was illegal yeah. um, and how you can't, how you don't investigate that um, is, I mean, it's, it's beyond it's me. And also yeah. the lack of media attention on this is mind boggling. You know, I've at first, you know, stories were coming out and then this past week, it's like barely anything has come out and it's really difficult to, mm -hmm. to find, um, to find people covering this story yeah. when it should it should be taking the country by storm, but it's kind of swept under the rug. And you won't find, you know, on ABC, CBS, you won't find any of them describing the state that these babies were in when they found them. Right. Um, when you actually read how these babies were found and you see these mm -hmm. images, which I really, I, I, I let, I told you, I, I haven't been able to really um, digest those pictures because just glancing at them makes me physically ill, but nobody is talking about um, the state of these babies. I was only mm -hmm. able to find that out um, through you guys, through live action, um, through other organizations that are, coming out there and saying like, Hey, you have to, let's look at these bodies. I mean, let's look mm -hmm. at what they went through. Um, mm -hmm. no one else is talking about it. Mm -mm. I'm it's, like, which is crazy because, you know, it, it, I mean, things like this tend to get, like you said, swept under the rug and it's so hard to stay relevant in today's like media yeah. because there's always something else. And, and you know, the, the crazy thing too, you touched on is like, we need to know, like exactly if how these babies died was in accordance with DC law or not, which brings into question, like what the heck is wrong with DC law that would even allow like this to happen? Yeah. You know, that like, was the second part of everything yes. where I was like, okay, let's say all of this was legal and this was done within the parameters of the DC law. That's a problem. I mean, like, I don't know how, I don't know how you can look at those images and read about how these babies died and think, well, that's okay because that's legal. It's legal. Yeah. It shouldn't, it, it, it shouldn't be legal. It is so brutal the way that these children died. It's yeah. so inhumane. Yeah. It, it is. is they are worth so much more so oh, yeah. much more yeah we need um, to look at our priorities as like a nation too if we're really yeah. saying like oh well they died this way and it was legal like like are we as a country like are we okay with that and not yeah. only like that but are we okay with like think about like their moms like this this is something that I just like can't get out of my head you know yeah. it's it's tough to think about like all the the what ifs and like the question marks with those moms like like how like how were they like like how were they literally like led to this decision because it's just absolutely nuts how what were they like lied to about you know, like, oh, you need this abortion for medical reasons. Like, live action already exposed. Like, you don't 
need abortions for medical reasons. Like yeah. how, how is this even happening? You know, and how are we letting women like be tricked into thinking that this is a good idea or that this is okay. Like yeah. we have to do better for women and the, the aftermath, I can only imagine of these women and, and the, the like emotional and physical and mental trauma that they are going through because of these abortions, like, like it's unfathomable. And I'm sure you as a mom can't, can't even like begin to think about like what that would have been like you like think about, you know, like just an hour before you were to give birth or a couple of days, like your body, your body, like your hormones, like can't, there's no way that you're not going to feel like something is missing when it's taken out of you forcefully. Yeah. You know, on that note, talking about like women being lied to and just more generally like the population being lied to, um, you know, when, when this, when this story broke and we learned about the state of these babies' bodies um, and the way in which they were killed. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, even me, someone who's pro-life, I didn't really understand how abortions are done. Um, and I fell through a rabbit hole of, okay, how is an abortion done? In those in that first trimester, how is a DNA performed in the second trimester? What's a DNX in the third trimester, and what each of those procedures looks like? And what's so infuriating is that once I got to the DNA procedure, so in the first trimester, you know, it's the fetus is is removed basically through you know a vacuum. Yeah. And then when you get to the second trimester, I laugh because it's it's just ridiculous, but it's mm -hmm. so infuriating. I can't tell you how many places I saw where it said, well, it's just like the first trimester um, abortion, except forceps are used. And I was like, and I kept seeing this over and I was like, okay, well, what are the forceps for? Right. And I Googled exactly, you know, the image of forceps and I was like, okay. And then it took me a while before I finally was able to get to a source that told me this is what forceps are used for. Mm -hmm. They're actually used to dismember the body and then the skull is crushed. Mm -hmm. And that's how the baby is removed by keeping the, you know, and keeping the woman's cervix intact. And I was floored. I was mm -hmm. like, how is that not, you know, when you go into a procedure, um, you are told every step of the way before mm -hmm. you go under, before you consent to this procedure, you mm -hmm. are told exactly what is being done to you. Mm -hmm. And I even saw on one um, abortion clinic, uh, again, trying to figure out exactly what was done in the DNA, it said, um, it said, that uh, that that procedure was done, you know, they used forceps and then mm -hmm. they gently remove um, all remains through a gentle procedure of using that vacuum. You know, I'm, I'm kind of butchering yeah. that bit, but yeah, no, they it's... use the word gentle. And I was just like, oh my God, you're lying. <laughs> like nothing about this is gentle. Like... You're lying. It's a lie. Yeah. It's not. I And I wonder... I mean, you talk about these women and, and how the possibility of them being lied to. And on a grander scale, I think the general population is probably being lied to. Oh, 100%. I don't think, I don't, I don't think the vast majority of people understand what goes into an abortion. 100%. 100%. At every step of the way. Yes. And when you look... Yeah at the babies that were found in DC and God, that one, you know, that one baby who was completely dismembered, her skull was crushed. I, I mean, obviously there's people that can look at that and be okay with that. And, and that is you, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think the vast majority of people, if they knew mm -hmm. what a DNA &E was, if they knew 
what a late term abortion was and the procedures that they used to do this. I, I know that most people would be adamantly against it. Yeah. Adamantly yeah. against it. Cause it's, yeah. it's horrifying. It's it horrifying that, that yeah. that is being done every day oh, yeah. to the most, most vulnerable mm -hmm. population, you know, it's, it's terrible. And, and that's why, like, it's good that you did the research because we have to be educated on, like, and, and if I, I fully believe that if people are going to say that they're pro-choice or whatever, and they're going to support that, like they do need to know like what mm -hmm. that actually is. And a lot of people don't. Because it's easy to say, well, I'm pro-choice, but then yep. when you dive into like what that actually means mm -hmm. and what you're actually standing beside and what like act you're defending, yeah, um, it changes the game a little bit, and mm -hmm. it, it changes the game too to to think about these these women and like it, you say that you support women, right? Like there's people that say I'm fem feminist, I support women, but you're allowing them to to basically be coaxed and lied into these procedures that are going to hurt them. They're going to hurt women hurt from abortions, like physically, emotionally, and, and mentally, like we can't stand by and watch these babies be killed and watch these women, you know, be, be a victim to the abortion industry and, and leave with scars, you know? Um, and, so many women it's so sad like I'm so thankful for post-abortive you know counseling and ministries and help because so many women leave that abortion clinic feeling empty and turn to um they become depressed and turn to like um you know there's so many women that commit suicide but they turn to like drugs and alcohol to try and cope with this pain that yeah. they didn't know like no one warns them of that you know and, and it's so sad. And, um, you know, I, I, it's crazy. So yesterday we had a board meeting and one of our, one of our board members, um, is Teresa, who was one that discovered the, the babies, um, in DC. And we were talking and we had gotten on the, the topic of Teresa is really amazing. She, she is a sidewalk counselor and, um, she, uh, sends women our way that need help like the financial aspect um you know they're in that abortion clinic literally and they're having that abortion because you know they're like five months on their back like uh, five months uh unpaid on their rent you know and it's like they just right. can't imagine being able to pay that so right. she sends us this mom and yesterday we started talking about oh hey Teresa, you sent us a couple moms right just kind of diving into that and she goes yeah did you know that actually one of those moms that we referred to you that we pulled out of the abortion clinic um, was at the Washington DC like surgery center where these babies were, were from that we, that we got. And I was like, what? And she said, yeah. So the, some of the babies that were aborted were actually dated before this mom dated before and after this mom was in the abortion clinic. So that mom was sitting there and to, to it blew my mind to think that her baby could have been one of the the dead bodies that they yeah. found, but yeah. we were able to help her. So it's like such a mix of like, I am like, we have to keep doing this work, but like, because I don't want women, I don't want their babies to be in that number, you know? And it was just mind blowing to me that, that, you know, I, I just, I've been racking my brain, like, these babies that were found in, in the five, like, is there something we could have done? And I wish, and I wish, I wish that they knew of, of the support that they do have, you know, and that's another piece of the education is like telling women, like you have alternatives and there are people, there are organizations that will be here for you. And we will like help you figure this out. Like we will walk you through this, you know, yeah. there there's real options. And well, yeah, that's one of the things I love about Let Them Live. And it's why it's one of the things that drew me to you guys in the first place. Um, and probably the, the biggest reason why I, I, you know, finally felt comfortable um, to be public about about this is the fact that 
you are so unbelievably compassionate towards women, all women, women who have been pregnant and had their babies, women who have been pregnant and considered abortion, women who have been pregnant and actually had an abortion. Like throughout all phases, you remain so compassionate to all women. And there is, I've never ever spoken to you um, and I've never seen any content on, on your social media accounts or on your website that ever spoke down to anybody um, ever, you know, it, in, in fact, it's quite the opposite. Uh, there's no judgment ever passed from mm-hmm. let them live. Um, and that's something that's really important to me, you know, like, cause who am I to judge mm-hmm. someone for what they did or what they thought about doing or, or, or what they didn't do? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not perfect. Um, <laughs> yeah, not me neither. Yeah, I'm like, I am not perfect. Um, although I like to tell my husband that I am, but yeah, right. <laughs> he knows better. Um, <laughs> um, you know, I, I can't imagine being in a position where I would have to think about getting an abortion mm-hmm. and the pain that that must be. Um, and I'm so fortunate, you know, yeah. and I, I know that. Mm-hmm. And you guys are just so wonderful at always, like, yes, we constantly talk about these babies. Um, but you also equally put the, the mother, the woman right there with them. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just one of the things I love about, about you guys. You. And talk about, you know, talk about a woman's choice. You know, I think... I think that's kind of a brilliant marketing um, campaign from the uh, pro-choice, you know, party. But um, yeah. let them live really actually gives them a choice yeah. because we know that so many yeah. women, the vast majority of women who actually do mm-hmm. go to get abortions, they do so because they are pressured into that, whether it's because they're pressured by their family, by their spouse, significant other at the time, or financially burdened Mm -hmm. um, and feel like Mm -hmm. they have no choice but to do this and let them live steps in and says, hey, look, I'm giving you another option. Mm -hmm. And now you really do have a choice. Mm -hmm. Where kind of before you felt handcuffed and felt that you had to do something. Yeah, like back into a corner. Yeah. And I think that, gosh, if 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 it's really about giving women a choice, if it's really Mm -hmm. about that, then let them live should be something that you support whether you are pro-choice or Mm pro-life, because it's giving women a choice. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you have to take it. We're trying to give an option. I'm just going to yeah. hire you to be our spokesperson, Josie. <laughs> I thought about this. <laughs> um, no, you're, but you're so spot on, too, because the crazy thing, and, and Nathan and I literally never saw this as something that would happen because we're pro-life, obviously, and we're <laughs> like, we're going to start this organization, and we're going to help women, and we're going to give them another option. And we've never thought ever that we would have like pro-choice supporters and donors, but we do. It's crazy. We have so many donors who are pro-choice. And while I don't agree with them, I think it's such an important piece of of the puzzle here that the pro-life movement has been missing where we can actually all come together and agree that choosing life, especially with the right type of support, is a valid choice. That should be on the table. So we're kind of like fighting for our place amongst, you know, these options that people think are available to women. And we're just like, hey, choosing life is the best option. um, And it's here. And we're going to help you do that. And, and I love like, I love exploring like, how let them live can be a place like you said, for people that believe anything, like literally pro life, pro choice, you can donate to us and know that you are going to help women. And that's really what it comes down to. Yeah. And, and that's, that's why too, like, I'm so glad that you're on here because 
you know, um, there's so much like, like you and I talked about, there's so much flack in like California and especially like in the Hollywood, like, you know, type yeah. careers where if you're pro-life, like you are ostracized like immediately, right? There's like no yeah. ifs, ands, or buts, but it's, you can actually like with let them live, you know, presenting let them live, you can actually say, Hey, like you and I might disagree, but we might actually agree on this organization and what they're doing. Right. <clears throat> and, you know, I think for me, that's why I finally took the plunge and cause I followed mm-hmm. let them live for a long time. Um, and then I started to donate to campaigns um, once I figured out, you know, what you guys were about and what you guys did, um, <clears throat> and the place of love with which you came and compassion and, and no judgment. Um, and then, and then that's when I kind of slid into your DM. I was like, how can I help? <laughs> Never I love thinking it. that you would ask me to be public and do this. <laughs> I just thought that I could kind of like be in the background and like help discreetly, <clears throat> But, you know, God had other plans and um, it's really hard to be vocal about Mm -hmm. something like this in -hmm. in the state where I live. And, you know, I'm now an attorney, but um, I was an actor for a really long time. Which is cool. Um, I didn't know that about you. So that's pretty awesome. (laughs) Oh, really? Okay. I didn't. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I was an actor for a long time and, and I, you know, it's definitely a different culture out here. And again, I mean, I don't, I just don't pass judgment. And I have so many friends and even best friends who don't agree with me on this at all, who are extremely pro-choice. And that's, that's okay. Like we can still be friends and we can still have um, meaningful, respectful conversations. Um, And I'm never going to make you feel bad for how you believe and and I hope that you reciprocate the same to me um Mm -hmm. but we can all kind of like for me it's just let's all we we can coexist here yeah um respectfully um I'm not trying to and that's that's how we can too like that's how we can you know there's a couple of approaches for for talking to people with different opinions especially on the issue of abortion because it's such a charged like topic um, people are very passionate one way or another. And and in my opinion, I, I have tons of pro-choice friends and family members and I have done the way of like arguing and like just getting super like like passionate about defending these moms and babies. Um, and that has really honestly never led me anywhere. No. <laughs> it, it, took us, it took us backwards, you know? So when I, I love like um, uh, presenting saying like, Hey, well, here's let them live. One of, one of Nathan's best friends is super pro-choice, but he loves let them live. He does not like any other like pro-life organizations, but he's like, I like what you guys do because you really want to help these women. And that conversation is so much more productive. And I think that you can actually help people see like if a pro-choice person donates to let them live, they're going to see the development of this baby through their ultrasounds. We keep the donors connected. They're going to see that this life was almost aborted, but because we were able to step in now, this life is here and like living and it's amazing. And there's a baby right in in their mind. Okay. Now we're there's a baby. We might actually start to impact their point of view by saying like, look, maybe abortion, like even having that option on the table isn't necessarily like the best option and they could start to see that life is valuable and shouldn't be snuffed out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. That's, that's why I, I kind of took the plunge if it wasn't for (laughs) let them live um, and an organization like you guys and and the people behind it. I don't, I don't think that, um, well, I know that I wouldn't, uh, be stepping up and being vocal about yeah. um, these beliefs, but so you guys you make it easy. <laughs> <laughs> so glad you did. And, and, you know, we were coming up on time. So I just wanted to ask you that one last thing, you know, if you could tell people like one thing who are considering donating or like getting involved with let them live or just like dipping their toe in the water with, mm-hmm. with the abortion issue that are kind of timid about it, you know, like, what would that be? Um, you know, you, you mentioned that 
this this past week and I'm like, how can I tell people, you know, how can I encourage people to do X, Y, and Z when I'm like kind of shaking in my boots? <laughs> you know, it, when you asked me to do this podcast, I like poop my pants. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, this is going to be so scary. And I don't know, I'm 100% going to receive so much backlash for it and, you know, all of that fun stuff. Um, I think a few things, um, one being what we've already talked about, which is if it really is about giving women a choice, um, this organization does exactly that. It gives women who feel like they are forced to do something they maybe don't really want to do <clears throat> because they're being pressured into doing so by a multitude of different reasons and you guys give them another option. Um, so if what you want to do is really give women a choice, this, this organization does that. Um, and the way in which you do it, the compassion with which you guys lead, um, and the way that you think about these women, um, and put them, you know, equally with the baby. And I just love that about, about you guys. And there's no judgment. There's just so much compassion. Um, and then the second thing, it's just like, for me, at least I, I can only speak on my behalf and it's, you know, we're, we're, we live in this, this day and age where I think people have been shunned or scared to speak their truth. Mm -hmm. And for me, um, I kind of had to look in the mirror and I thought all of these things about myself, that I was strong and that I was courageous and that I was brave. Um, but, you know, push came to shove here. And for me, it was like, who do I want to be? And what do I believe in? And I'm raising kids. I'm raising babies. Can I look at them and say, be brave, be courageous, believe, you know, put your money where your mouth is if I'm not doing that, you know? Mm -hmm. And that was probably the biggest piece for me. Like when I go to bed at night and all of these thoughts are running through my head, am I going to be okay with what I did that day? Mm -hmm. Am I going to go to bed with peace? Mm -hmm. And that's, the most important thing, you know, like, are you doing right by you? Are you doing mm -hmm. right by your children? In my case, am I doing right by, by God? And, and, and that was for me in, in, in this case was doing this podcast and, and being public with my, with my beliefs. And, yeah. and if that, and if I have to take flack for it and yeah. then bring it on baby. Yeah, I love it. I mean, it's a sacrifice, you know, but it's like every day, you know, I'm doing this work and I'm like, what, who am I doing this for? What am I doing this for? Like, what are the sacrifices? And it's so worth it, you know, for these little lives that we see and, and it's, it's the best thing ever. And, and I'm, I felt the exact same way. I relate with you so much, like at the end of the day and at the end of my life, right. I always right. think I want to look back on my life and help, like be able to say or have somebody tell me like there are generations alive because of what you did because of you because you spoke up and the same thing I'm telling you this Josie too like you have donated you have literally saved lives like by doing this podcast and speaking up like you are also encouraging others to do it and there will be generations because of this and and I'm so so thankful like from the bottom of my heart like for you and and for your words and encouragement and just everything you had to say today. And I'm just so thankful to know you and, yeah. you know, be in this, this like mission with you. It's, it's such a blessing and an honor for sure. Thank you. I feel, okay. I mean, honestly, I feel exactly the same way. Um, you guys just kind of fell into my lap. I don't even know how I came across you. I think somehow you ended up on my IG feed and <clears throat> I fell I down. About it. It. Um, well, I'm glad you did. <laughs> here we are. Here we are. Well, thank you again for taking the time to, and I'm really excited to 
to get this out to everybody yeah. and it's going to be great. And thanks for doing my first podcast with me. Yay. So I think it was a first success. of many, I hope. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I hope so too. So thank you. Thank you.